time helping the school with all the events and functions and they have two beautiful boys in the school, one is in pre-K and one is in my son Jacob's class. So at this time I would like to invite Audrey to do his speech. Thank you. And in other words, she makes me look good. Um, first and foremost, I, I have something for the school that I'm also going to want to present, but I'll do that at the end. Um, Harold, Francis, thank you very much for your lifetime of service. You, your humility resonates. And I got to say, in public service, that's the first trait I look for. We, there's many people who have accomplished wonderful things in life, but it's the humility. When hubris takes over, things don't work out as well. So thank you for your humility. Thanks for being here tonight to be able to also be recognized. I, um, uh, I always deal with the question of what makes a community. And we keep on talking about that as well. And some of you have probably heard that from me in other places. Um, I came here as an immigrant from Iran. I came here on political asylum at the age of eight. English is my fourth language. I think I've said that to some of you. Uh, and uh, I've worked through many challenges uh, in order to be able to be here and stand before all of you. But my challenges are fairly new. Many of you, I had the opportunity to speak to at least 12 of the tables on this side of the room and introduce myself. Many of you can write books and various chapters of the challenges that you've overcome. Uh, 60, 70 years ago, your parents or your grandparents have had to overcome. So, when we built our community in the United States, there's four basic principles that go into this. And there's the financing part, the economy, there's the social, cultural component, there's the spiritual, and then there's the political. We haven't done so well on the political side. We're still working on it. We're, we're, we're getting there. But we've done very well in the other three parts. We've done great when it comes to finances. We've had some of the most successful Armenians. We've done great on social and cultural. We've done uh, great on the spiritual end. Anytime we show up to a certain city or a certain area, so if there's a handful of Armenian families, we build a church right away. We build a community center. We try to create that environment that you know the families and the kids can come and create a hub and grow with one another and start a community. So we're wonderful at that. But times also change, and they demand more from us. It was one thing to have a community in Iran, where my family came from, from Lebanon, from Syria, uh, and from many other places, where it was easy to maintain your identity. It was, whether it was religious difference, uh, primarily religious, uh, language or heritage or centuries of coexistence, millennia of existence, coexistence. Here in the United States, it's much more difficult. For whatever reason, the minute we get here, we want to be an American. The minute I got here, even though English was my fourth language, I wanted to get rid of any trace of my accent, perfect the enunciation, be as American as I can, even though I have brown hair and hazel eyes and I can't fit in any way, and I'm short, uh, so genetics works against me. But in every other way, be able to be part of the community. And we've been pretty successful at that. But why we continue to send our kids to school is to maintain the identity. It's to make sure that we continue with the religion, with the language, with the culture, with the heritage, with the oral history, uh, fostering relationships, and to continue building that community. What is it that the kids get from us? As many of you have been here, many of you have had a hand in either building this school, or the churches, or other schools, or other institutions. And we do have a vibrant community. It doesn't matter on the Armenian political spectrum, it doesn't matter on which church it is. We have a plethora, an abundance of different organizations. And it's pretty both vital as well as vibrant. But what is it that the kids get? 
because they keep on thinking about why is it that my children, Alex and David Beg, and David Beg was on purpose, my family, my dad's side of the family comes from Shushi. They escaped Shushi in 1920 when the city was burned down. My father, so they moved to Baku, and my father was born in Baku in 1928. And then when the Bolsheviks came and took over, and we're gonna lay down the Iron Curtain, my uh, grandfather decided to leave and move to Iran because he didn't want to be under a Bolshevik regime. And of course, the NKVD at the time found out, and so they exiled my grandmother to a Siberian work camp for about four and a half years. She was a tough woman. She survived and uh, came back, grabbed my, her two sons, my father, and uh, who was now about nine years old. She was exiled when he was only four. Uh, and his older brother, and moved to Iran. And they ended up, um, uh, they ended up living in Iran until, until unfortunately the revolution took place and we ended up having to move here to the US. But the reason why I talk about why two kids, why, why the kids now need to look at us and what they're getting from us, it's two words for me that it comes down to. And that's what we instill in them, not just through the oral history, not just through the heritage and the language and the culture and everything else, but the unspoken, unspoken traits that we instill. And the only way I can explain it is great perseverance over time. That unspoken magic of knowing within you that you're gonna achieve something and you're gonna wanna push ahead. Right? It can take you years, it can take you a few decades, whatever it is, you're gonna get there. It's not just perseverance, it's perseverance through endurance. And the second thing, and this is the hardest thing that I've been able to actually, I haven't really been able to put my finger on it until very recent years, invincibility. You know, and it's not the invincibility of just make, taking stupid risks, being youthful and making mistakes, but it's the invincibility of growing up in a community where you know you have this sense of support around you that no matter what risks you take, no matter what journeys that you want to move in front to uh, and pursue, that there's this unspoken backing that you have behind you, giving you that, that, that wind, that sail that you need to push ahead. And I say this because I've been the beneficiary of this. And when I came to, this, to the United States, it was it, it was just the family, it was just my mother and I, my sister was here, and then slowly my brother, my father, everyone slowly trickled in and, you know, took us about seven years total until we reunited. But that was it. My cousin ended up in Denmark, my uncle ended up in Sweden. The war is devastating and it's unforgiving, we know that. But what was amazing in all of that was that we took the time and we did what we needed to do. It's a hard thing to explain, but it's the actions that I think our teachers instill on a daily basis. And this is the reason why Diana and I have chosen not just any, other, any Armenian school either, but Merdinia, to continue having our kids be educated here. Because that love, that warm embrace is you don't get that in any in every environment. It's very unique. It's unique to our community because it's our own. But it also makes a difference at what school. And that humility that we were talking about, you see it. So uh, this is a very personal issue for me. I, uh, uh, I love what the school does. But I also feel that as Armenians and as the incubation hubs of our future Armenian generations. These are incubation hubs. We have a great role in instilling that grit and invincibility in every child so that they know that nothing can stop them. If they want to be the next president, they can do it. If they want to be CEOs of companies, they can do it. We don't need to just stay in our marketplace. 
we can expand and we can do wonderful things moving beyond. So with that, I, uh, a lot was already said and I don't need to expand on it. Everything from Dr. Nazareth Darakjian's comments, brief comments that encompassed the Armenian diaspora uh, to also Lena, the singer, uh, the young singer. I loved how she grabbed the mic. In fact, that's what we need more of. Seats like mine don't, aren't just given away. You gotta take it. And that's what it's gonna take, that grit and invincibility so that more people step up and uh, make sure that that foundation of the fourth pillar I was talking about, the political pillar, is strengthened. So with that, thank you very much to all of you, not just Francis and Harold. You two embody uh, what many other folks here do on a regular basis. Thank you for continuously investing, not just in the community, but in this one little incubation hub. And thank you for, for what you do in making sure that parents like Diana and I, and many of us here also, uh, are able to take advantage of uh, not only in sh in instilling a certain identity in our kids, but making sure that they become con future contributors to the community as well. With that, I'd like to also take the opportunity, and uh, and you know, one of the cool things we get to do, we, we get a lot of criticism being in public office about the gas tax increase and many other taxes and fees. I hear it all, and I'm sure I'm going to hear from it as I'm making my way to the door as well. It's all welcome, folks. Um, it's a process. It's a process. But one of the great things that we get to do is recognize individuals and organizations um, that contribute so much and, and over time also don't get the appropriate recognition that they deserve. So I was very honored to be able to not only recognize Harold and Francis for their hard work, but also to take an opportunity and uh, uh, on behalf of the state legislature, present something to the school. I'm gonna ask Dr. Vahen Albantian and uh, Principal Lina Aslanian to join me here, if you can, please. But while they are the faces of the decision-making and the administration of the school, I do want this to be a recognition for everyone's effort because it takes a village. So please come on up, please come on up. This, this also includes all of the administration staff, especially the teachers, all the folks that on a daily basis put the care and the love and that embrace in making sure that all our children grow up having a good foundation of the identity. So thank you very much for what you do on a daily basis. Signed by the Honorable Adrian Nazarian.
Thank you. So I will uh, invite the coaches of the women's auxiliary, Louisa Jambazian and Ali Hanesian. I believe that they have a gift to the school.